your first memories of when you were a child? Uh, well, it would be close when I was a child. We about two, I was about two and a half when we went out to India. I suppose those are really my first memories. I, I unfortunately, I don't remember seeing you and Pat at all. And yet there was a vague sort of feeling in me that there was somebody. You know, when I was about eight, nine, ten, I used to imagine that I had a brother and sister. Did you? Yeah. That's good. And uh, about the same ages, you know. I mean, the difference in ages. We you know, we thought maybe I had one, but I didn't know. That's interesting. As far as I know, I was an only child. <laughs> now we left before independence. You left before? We left right in the end of the war and came to America. But we were planning to go back to England. And then my mother decided she didn't want to go. She said she had too many unhappy memories, so we didn't go. We stayed over here. And then you, you were a teenager at this stage, right? You, you were a well, teenager when I came here, yeah. yes. 13, uh, 16. And you went to school here? A little bit, yes, but then I went to work. Yeah. So yes. that was when you were what? 18? 16. 16? Yeah. And you went to work in Western Union? Not then. That was two years later. I was working in 10 cent stores and things like that. But then I got a job at Western Union when I was 18. And I stayed there 30, 37 years, I think. <laughs> Which was useful. I got a pension out of it anyway. And did you like to work? In a way, yes. I did. Well, it was interesting meeting people. I mean, you got to know a lot of people by, on the telephone, and people coming to the counter, all sorts of characters. And, uh, yeah, I would have liked to have done something different, but that was a good job, and you couldn't just drop it. Yeah. And then you, all the time you were living with your mum? Yes. And you were taking care of her? Yeah. And um, were you the breadwinner in the family? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Eventually, my father, see my father, they were, they divorced. My father was, lived in England. And when he died, she got, she, they didn't recognize the divorce in England, so she got a pension. And when, which is a little bit, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but mostly, yes, I was the chief breadwinner. And then, in, when your mother died, you, Take us through that. You, you were looking through her papers and things and, uh, after she passed away. Yeah. No, I found out a little before that. She told me. Did you? Oh, I see. Yeah. She finally confessed to the fact. And, but she was so emotional about it. And I, of course, I wanted, to, I wanted to meet you, but I was afraid to because I knew she was going to be terribly upset, thinking she'd be abandoned and I would go over to Ireland and leave her, you know, and so. I just sort of kept quiet about it. And what were your feelings when? What? How, what did you think? What were you? How, what, how did you feel when, when she told you the truth about your, your your background? That I wasn't anybody. That I was lost. You yeah. know, I felt so, so strange, and, and I would look at her and say, I don't, I don't know you. You know, it was a weird feeling for a while. Of course, I adjusted. You know, people do, but uh, that was a little bit of resentment in me. I think. You know, that she kept me from you and uh, never told me about you. Yeah. You know, so many lost years. <laughs> and did that last till, till she died? Did that, that little bit of resentment in, in you towards her? To me, I, I had it, yeah. I, I shouldn't have, I know. You're not supposed to resent things. But I did, I'm, I'm afraid so. But uh, I never said anything. I was just little. Yeah. You know, the good daughter, I guess. Well, she had adopted me and looked after me and loved me. And I know she loved me. I was not a question of that. And well, a little bit too dependent on me, I think. So then remind me of, of, of the, you made the contact, of course, with, with Twink. With famously. Twink, yes. <laughs> and the television program that didn't happen and all that. And, and then you, do you remember a landing in Dublin? And, of course, you, you came to London first and you met Kate, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. And then uh, that was Man Fern, of course. And uh, that was one. I, when I saw Kate, I thought, I've known you all my life, feeling, you know. And then when I went to Dunleary, you know, off the ferry, and 
Peter and Pat came through the door. I was trundling some luggage in it. And we had a three-way hug. Everybody very emotional, including me. It was so wonderful. And then I thought, I've known you all my life. You know, yeah, I felt it. And I hadn't been away from them, really. But I wanted to tell you one thing, that when I was coming on the ferry, and we were approaching Dunleary, and they saw the Wicklow Mountains, you know, I thought, I've come home. And that was the feeling I had. I never really lost it. I still feel it at home. Do you? And your dad, of course, had a big affection for Ireland. Yeah, I know. I heard he and did. he called you Deirdre. Yes, Deirdre Maeve. I mean, what Deirdre else? Deirdre Maeve, yeah. How much, how much more Irish can you get? And, and what, was your, what were your impressions of, of, of Pat and, and, and Peter? Oh, I adored them right away. I loved them right away. Did you? And Anne. When I came to, we came to the cottage, and 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 was came to the door, and she said, "Darling girl, at last," and I was so touched, you know. It sounds like Anne, doesn't it? That sounds like the kind of thing she'd say. And yeah. I just felt at home. That was it. And, I, and, and that photograph that you have on your wall is the photograph from that first visit, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, and we're all there. Yeah, all very much younger. <laughs> very much younger. But I know on the same visit that I have a picture of myself carrying Rory and it's like, oh my God, he's heavy. Yeah. He was cute. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, Owen was a little shy in those stages. You know? He was, yeah. Not shy now. No. <laughs> Did Pat at one stage want you to come and live in, 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 in her place? I was hoping to, yeah. yeah. And I know various things happened. And, I had, you know, I had so much st stuff. And I had three cats and yeah. and all that was a problem. But I would have liked to have done. I wish I had. I'd, yeah, it would have been interesting just to. Pat was talking about having a caravan on her lot. <laughs> <laughs> I would be in the caravan. And do you remember the time she died? Do you remember all that? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, they called me and I couldn't come because. It, he called me on Saturday when she died, and I, I tried. I remember sitting up all night trying to get a, a plane reservation. I couldn't, yeah. you know, to get there in time. So that was very really traumatic. The last time, last time I remember seeing her was, we went to lunch, at, on my visit in the winter. Remember January. Uh, we went to lunch at Rose and John's. John was taking Pat home. And, you know, I walked, remember walking down the, road, the path with her. You know, and that was the last time I saw her. But at least I had a chance to know her and to know Peter. Yeah. And they stay. Their memories stay with you, you know. You don't forget them. Besides, I met everybody else. <laughs> you yeah, and you were the standard gang, yeah. The only one I didn't meet was Nanny. Yeah. And Kate, and for this is Kate's, this is Kate's third time to come and see you. Well, just, yes. Just, uh, yes, it is. That's right. She came with Fern. Yeah. And she came with Nanny. Yeah. Then she came now. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm lucky. And tell, let's talk a little bit about your life in, in you mean, you obviously you lived in Miami. You're a kind of a, a Florida, you're a Florida native, really, aren't you? At oh, no, please. <laughs> And then, t when did you meet Dini? How did you meet Dini? Uh, I met her in an organization that I belonged to. It was about, about 1990. And uh, so I've known her that long. And then, uh, but she lived on Miami Beach in the, one of those condos. And uh, it was about, well, we've been here six years. It was about a couple of years before that, I moved out of my apartment and lived with her. And now she's living with me, so the circle. But uh, that's how it worked. And you help each other out? We you? help each other okay. out, yes. Fuss at each other sometimes. Well, and, that, yeah. and you share, you like you like going to the diner across. Tell us about going, you like going across the... To the yeah, we go there about Saturday, every Saturday and Sunday, we go there and have coffee. You drink coffee and a muffin or something, feed the birds. It's lovely being by the water. I mean, I think we're so lucky. Because right on the water like that. 
And tell us this, um, then you have, you both, you're both uh, practicing Catholics. Yes, you see, I, I was uh, Anglican. That's how I was up, but I, I was baptized Catholic, I know, because Pat was, and I know I would have been, but my, we haven't been able to find my certificate yet. But anyway, and I'm supposed to be going through the process of becoming it. See. But they still let me take mass and everything. So it's like, but I like it. I've been drawn to it. So I'm happy with it. That's good. And you mean you, you mentioned to me you read people like Thomas Merton. You're, you're a Thomas Merton fan, yeah. so to speak. Well, when I went to Trinity, which was the Episcopal Cathedral, the dean there was a great fan of Thomas Merton, so he was always quoting him in his sermons. And that's how I became involved in him. And it very, I think he's a very interesting man. And tell me this, um, what's life like in the, the hemispheres? You're, you're settled here, as you say, six years. You have a nice apartment, uh, nice, it's nicely run, there's security. What's it like living here? Is it? It's very nice because everybody is very nice. There are a lot of older people, but there are also, now there are a lot of uh, middle-aged and, and younger than there were when we first came. But I like moving here because we have, well, we have the house bus, which takes us to the grocery store. We have a library, a lot of books in it. And you know, we have the pools and the restaurants. It's like a little uh, community, really. I like it very much. I'm glad we moved here. Um, wish we'd moved here earlier. <laughs> anyway, that was. And what are you looking forward to for the rest of 2013? Hopefully that I'll be able to walk around better. <laughs> And that we'll both be well, you know. That's the main thing, really. And just enjoy life. And what would you like, if you, if you had one, to give a simple message to everyone back at home, though? Just that I, I am so happy and blessed that they're in my life, that I love them all very much. I wish I could see them more often, but I want them to know that I always think of them I pray for them and I love them.